The Grey Ghost, True Hauntings of the Queen Mary. The RMS Queen Mary was built by John Brown and Company in Clydebank, Scotland. Construction began in 1930 and she was launched on September 26, 1934. She set out on her maiden voyage on May 27, 1936 from Southampton, England to New York City. The Queen Mary was known for luxury and represented the pinnacle of British shipbuilding. With the onset of World War II, the Queen Mary, like many other ships, was repurposed for the war effort. In 1939, she was refitted for troop ship duties and was painted gray, leading her to be nicknamed the Grey Ghost. She played a pivotal role in transporting troops. Along with her sister ship, the Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mary carried over two million soldiers and set a record for carrying the most troops on a single voyage. After the war, the Queen Mary was refitted for passenger service and continued to sail the North Atlantic route. However, with the rise of air travel in the 1960s, the ship's popularity and profitability declined. In 1967, the Queen Mary was retired from service. She was sold to the city of Long Beach, California, and has been permanently moored there since. The ship now serves as a hotel, event space, and tourist attraction. Reported Hauntings There have been numerous ghostly encounters and supernatural tales associated with the Queen Mary, many of which have become legendary. The following are a few of the most famous documented reports in modern history. Engine Room The ship's engine room, which is now door 13, is believed to be haunted by the spirit of a young sailor who was crushed to death by a watertight door during a drill in the 1960s. Visitors have reported seeing a ghostly figure in blue overalls and hearing unexplained noises. Stateroom B340 this room has a history of reports of paranormal activity, ranging from faucets turning on by themselves to bed covers being pulled off. Supposedly, disturbances were so frequent that the room was closed off to the public for many years. However, it has since been reopened and can be booked by those hoping for a ghostly encounter. Children's Pool Area The sounds of children laughing and splashing in the pool have been reported though no children are present. There's also a story of a young girl named Jackie who drowned in the second-class pool area and is now said to haunt the vicinity, singing and asking for her doll. First Class Lounge. Now known as the Queen Salon, some guests have reported seeing a woman in a white evening gown dancing alone in the shadows. The Promenade. There have been sightings of a mysterious lady in a green evening gown she is often referred to as the Lady in Green. Sir Winston's Restaurant and Lounge. Some diners have reported seeing an apparition of an older man in 1930s style clothing, possibly a former ship's officer. While numerous paranormal incidents have been reported over the years, the following cases are the most well-documented in modern history. Twenty seventeen. Steve and Jamie, an adventurous couple from Portland, decided to spend their honeymoon aboard the famed Queen Mary. They'd both been fans of history and the allure of the vintage ship in Long Beach seemed like the perfect romantic getaway. Little did they know their stay would be anything but ordinary. Booking one of the ship's renowned staterooms, they were initially taken by its charm, the blend of Art Deco design with modern amenities. Their first day aboard was spent exploring the ship, dining in its restaurants and enjoying the ocean views. However, the stillness of the night brought with it an unexpected disturbance. Just past midnight, Jamie was awakened by the distant sound of children giggling. Disoriented, she nudged Steve, who also heard the playful whispers. Assuming it was just some late-night revelers or perhaps the sounds from an adjoining room, Steve went to the door to see if he could spot the source. The corridors were silent and a quick peek revealed no children playing. 
Feeling a bit unnerved, but attributing it to their imagination and the ship's creaking sounds, they tried to go back to sleep. But as Jamie was drifting off, she felt a deliberate tug on her sheets, as if someone was trying to pull them away. Startled, she switched on the bedside lamp, half expecting to see Steve playing a prank. But Steve, equally alarmed, was right beside her. A thorough check of their room revealed nothing out of place. The next day, they shared their experience with a ship's historian during a tour. He nonchalantly explained that other guests had reported similar occurrences, hinting at the ship's storied past and the many tales of hauntings. Although slightly shaken, Steve and Jamie chose to stay the remainder of their trip, taking their eerie night as just another story to tell. The playful spirits of the Queen Mary had, after all, given them a honeymoon they'd never forget. Erica Frost. Erica Frost, a seasoned paranormal investigator with an innate sensitivity to the supernatural, had long been drawn to the tales of the Queen Mary. The ship's storied past, combined with its countless accounts of spectral activity, made it a location she couldn't resist. When she finally secured permission to conduct an overnight investigation, she arrived with a mix of anticipation and skepticism. One of the ship's most talked about locations was its first-class swimming pool. Despite the pool being long drained and no longer in use, it was the epicenter of numerous ghostly reports. Erica's first visit was during the day, a preliminary recon before her nighttime investigation. Even then, she could sense an unusual energy in the room, a palpable heaviness that was hard to shake off. Night came, and equipped with an array of electronic devices designed to detect and communicate with spirits, Erica entered the pool area. The dim overhead lights cast eerie shadows on the vintage tiles. Almost immediately, she heard what sounded like water splashing followed by the distant, muted laughter of children. The chilling part, the pool was empty. Erica, ever the professional, began documenting her observations, even capturing some of the sounds on her audio recorder, setting up a device known as a spirit box, which scans through radio frequencies to allow spirits to communicate using white noise. Erica attempted to make contact. Clear among the static, she heard a voice, a young girl's voice, uttering a single word. Jackie. This name resonated with Erica, as Jackie was the reported spirit of a young girl believed to have drowned in the pool years ago. Over the course of the night, Erica experienced several more inexplicable phenomena, from sudden cold spots to her equipment malfunctioning in specific areas of the ship. But the most profound experience was her communication with Jackie. In a moment of stillness, Erica felt a cold hand touch her own. Startled, she asked if it was Jackie. The spirit box in its fragmented electronic voice replied, yes. Erica left the Queen Mary with more questions than answers, a common sentiment among paranormal investigators. Her recordings, observations, and experiences aboard the ship became a significant chapter in her investigative career. And while she may not have found definitive proof of the afterlife, she had undoubtedly touched the echoes of the past that still linger aboard the Grey Ghost. Amy Bruni and Adam Barry. Amy Bruni and Adam Barry, known for their deep dives into the paranormal on the television show Kindred Spirits, couldn't resist the allure of the Queen Mary. Its reputation as one of the most haunted locations globally was an invitation they couldn't turn down. Teamed up with a crew and an array of high-tech equipment, they were prepared for a 48-hour lockdown aboard the ship. The duo's research had led them to the ship's boiler room. Historical accounts mentioned a tragic accident where a crew member had been fatally scalded. Determined to uncover any residual energies or possibly communicate with this spirit, Amy and Adam started their investigation there. 
Almost immediately, they experienced unexplained temperature fluctuations. Their thermal cameras picked up cold spots juxtaposed against the surrounding warmer environment. This wasn't an unusual phenomenon for them, but the intensity and frequency aboard the Queen Mary were unlike anything they had previously encountered. Adam's voice recorder, set to pick up EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, suddenly malfunctioned. The device had been fully charged and was in perfect working condition just moments before. After a quick check, it mysteriously resumed working. When they later reviewed the recordings, they discovered a distorted voice, murmuring something that sounded like, it's so hot. Intrigued and somewhat unnerved, they moved their investigation to the corridors where many guests had reported apparitions and disembodied voices. As they wandered, Amy felt a sudden unease, a weight pressing down on her. This sensation escalated into dizziness, forcing her to pause. As Adam reached out to steady her, their equipment registered a significant electromagnetic spike, suggesting some unseen presence was near. Using a spirit box, they attempted to communicate. Amidst the static, a voice emerged, saying, Leave. Taking it as a sign that they were intruding on someone's territory, they respectfully retreated. Throughout their 48-hour stay, Amy and Adam experienced numerous unexplained phenomena. From whispered voices to fleeting shadows, the Queen Mary proved to be a treasure trove of supernatural activity. After their investigation, they reflected on the importance of respecting these spirits. These were once living souls with stories and emotions. Their experiences on the Queen Mary were a poignant reminder that, in the quest for understanding the afterlife, one should always approach with empathy and reverence. Nick Groff and Katrina Weidman the Queen Mary's reputation as a spectral sanctuary drew the attention of Nick Groff and Katrina Weidman, co-hosts of the television show, Paranormal Lockdown. Dedicated to immersing themselves fully in their investigations, the pair committed to spending 48 uninterrupted hours aboard the historic ship, aiming to experience its hauntings firsthand. Upon arrival, the grandeur of the Queen Mary was not lost on them. They were both captivated by its timeless elegance. But as night approached, the atmosphere shifted. The vibrant energy of the day was replaced by a still, almost pressing silence. It was this palpable change that marked the beginning of their investigation. Their first area of interest was the ship's infamous Door 13. This heavy, watertight door was the scene of a tragic accident in 1966, where an 18-year-old crew member was crushed to death. It was said that his spirit still lingered, making the engine room an epicenter of paranormal activity. Setting up cameras and EVP devices, Nick and Katrina began their vigil. Katrina, known for her empathetic connection to spirits, suddenly felt an overwhelming sensation of anxiety. She described it as a feeling of being trapped, mirroring the desperate final moments of the crew member. As she voiced her feelings, the temperature around them dropped noticeably. Their thermal camera, aimed at door 13, captured a fleeting shadow, a brief silhouette that seemed to vanish into the steel door. Moving on, they ventured to the ship's pool areas, known for their spectral residence. Katrina, ever sensitive to her surroundings, began to feel an unexplained sadness. As she shared her feelings with Nick, a child's voice was captured on their EVP, softly whispering, Play with me. They both recognized this as possibly being Jackie, the young spirit said to haunt the pool areas. One of the most chilling moments of their stay, however, was in the ship's corridors. As they navigated the labyrinthine passageways, their cameras picked up a shadowy figure. Tall and imposing, it seemed to be observing them from a distance. Nick, trying to engage, called out, asking for a sign. Almost on cue, a nearby light flickered, casting an eerie glow that sent shivers down their spines. As their 48-hour stay concluded, both Nick and Katrina felt a profound connection to the Queen Mary. 
Their experiences, a blend of technology and intuition, added to the tapestry of tales that the ship holds within its steel walls. In reflection, they both agreed that the Queen Mary was more than just a vessel of the seas. It was a vessel of stories, memories, and perhaps souls still seeking their final port of call. Matthew Schultz In 2008, Matthew Schultz, a journalist from New York, had often heard tales of the Queen Mary's spectral inhabitants. While he approached most things in life with a healthy dose of skepticism, his curiosity got the better of him, and he decided to spend a weekend aboard the ship. Securing a stateroom that was often noted for its paranormal activity, Matthew settled in, fully expecting a quiet and uneventful stay. He was, after all, more interested in the ship's history than its ghostly legends. His first day was spent wandering the decks, visiting the ship's museum and enjoying the panoramic views of Long Beach Harbor. That night, however, the Queen Mary decided to introduce Matthew to its more mysterious side. Just past 2 a.m., he was awakened by the soft sound of footsteps. At first, he dismissed it as the echoes from the corridor or perhaps the creaks of the old ship settling, but the rhythmic pattern of the steps seemed too deliberate, too human. Growing more alert, Matthew strained his ears, trying to pinpoint the source. To his astonishment, the footsteps seemed to be inside his room, moving closer to his bed. Frozen in place and with his heart racing, he reached for the bedside lamp. As light flooded the room, the footsteps ceased. Surveying the room, everything appeared to be in order, with no signs of intrusion. Just as Matthew was about to dismiss the entire experience as a product of his half-awake mind, he noticed something that sent a chill down his spine. On the adjacent bed, there was a clear imprint, as if someone had been sitting there watching him. As he stared, the imprint began to slowly fade until the sheets were smooth again. Sleep eluded Matthew for the rest of the night. At dawn, he sought out the ship's staff, sharing his nocturnal visitor's tale. To his surprise, they seemed unsurprised. His room, they informed him, was one of several that frequently had such reports. Past guests had shared similar tales of unseen presences and mysterious footsteps. While Matthew's stay aboard the Queen Mary was cut short, he checked out later that day. The experience left an indelible mark. Though he couldn't fully explain what he'd experienced, he left with a newfound respect for the ship's legends. The Queen Mary, with its rich tapestry of history, emotion, and perhaps lingering spirits, had turned a skeptic into a curious believer. Jennifer and Sarah. In 2015, Jennifer and Sarah, two college friends with a shared passion for history and adventure, chose the Queen Mary as their summer vacation spot. They were drawn not just by the ship's majestic stature, but also by the whispered tales of its ethereal residence. Carrying a mix of excitement and trepidation, they embarked on what they hoped would be an experience of a lifetime. Their first day was filled with the typical tourist activities. They marveled at the ship's art deco design, dined at the fine restaurants on board and took countless photographs. As night approached, they decided to partake in one of the ship's guided ghost tours. As they wandered the ship's bowels with a group of fellow tourists, Sarah began to feel a peculiar sensation, a cold draft around her ankles. Considering they were indoors, she found it odd and mentioned it to Jennifer, who felt nothing. Shrugging it off, Sarah continued with the tour. However, as they approached the area of the ship where the young crew member John Petter met his untimely death at door 13, Sarah's unease grew. She began to feel lightheaded and disoriented. Jennifer, concerned, suggested they step away from the group for a moment. As they retreated to a nearby bench, Sarah suddenly felt a weight on her shoulder, as if someone was trying to comfort her. She turned to Jennifer, only to find her friend equally bewildered. No one was there. Feeling an inexplicable connection to the area, Sarah was compelled to return to door 13. 
She described it as a magnetic pull, an urge she couldn't resist. As they stood there, both women distinctly heard a soft, whispered voice. I'm sorry. The voice seemed filled with regret and sorrow. Stunned, they quickly rejoined their group, trying to process what they'd just experienced. Upon sharing their story with the tour guide, he nodded knowingly. Many visitors, he explained, felt an intense emotional connection to John Petter's tragic spot. The young man's spirit seemed forever tethered to the ship, reliving his final moments and perhaps seeking solace. The remainder of Jennifer and Sarah's stay was uneventful in comparison, but that single experience was profound. A stark reminder of the thin veil that might exist between the present and the past. They left the Queen Mary with not just memories of a summer adventure, but a heartfelt connection to a soul lost in time. David and Linda Miller David and Linda Miller, a couple celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary, chose the Queen Mary as the perfect romantic getaway. Both avid enthusiasts of maritime history, they were thrilled to explore the grandeur of the ship and indulge in the luxuries it offered. Upon their arrival, David surprised Linda with a stay in one of the ship's most luxurious suites, a gesture that left her delighted. The room, with its vintage decor, panoramic windows, and breathtaking views was nothing short of a dream. Their days were filled with romantic dinners, long walks on the deck, and exploring the historical sections of the ship. Everything was perfect until their second night aboard. Linda, a light sleeper, was jolted awake by a soft, haunting melody. It sounded like a piano being played each note dripping with emotion. Intrigued and slightly unnerved, she woke David, who was initially dismissive until he too heard the music. There was something both beautiful and melancholic about the tune, as if it carried with it tales of long-lost love and heartbreak. Determined to find the source, David and Linda followed the music. Their search led them to one of the ship's grand ballrooms, which at this late hour was cloaked in darkness. As they cautiously entered, the music grew louder, more intense. They expected to find someone at the piano, but to their astonishment, the room was empty. The grand piano sat untouched, its keys still. The couple stood there, spellbound. As suddenly as it had begun, the music ceased, leaving behind a profound silence. Confused and overwhelmed, David and Linda quickly retreated to their suite, locking the door behind them. The next morning, over breakfast, they shared their experience with a crew member. The gentleman, a longtime employee of the ship, listened attentively and then shared a legend. Decades ago, a pianist named Eleanor had been a regular performer on the Queen Mary. Known for her captivating performances, she had tragically lost her love during the war. Heartbroken, she'd often play a particular melody in his memory, pouring her grief into every note. Over the years, many guests had reported hearing her signature tune, especially on quiet nights when the ship seemed to come alive with memories. David and Linda left the Queen Mary with a mix of emotions. Their romantic getaway had turned into a surreal experience, a brush with the inexplicable. They were reminded of the ship's rich history, its tales of joy, sorrow, and the lingering spirits that perhaps still called it home. Elena Martinez. Elena Martinez, a travel blogger with a penchant for exploring unique and historically rich locations, decided to book a solo trip aboard the Queen Mary. With her camera and journal in hand, Elena looked forward to documenting her stay immersing herself in the ship's stories, both tangible and ethereal. On her first evening, after a delightful dinner on deck with a view of the shimmering Long Beach skyline, Elena decided to wander the ship's quieter areas, hoping to capture some atmospheric shots. As she descended into the lower decks, the bustling sounds of the upper levels began to fade, replaced by the echoing footsteps of her own shoes against the metal floor. In the dim light, 
she reached an old class cabin section that was no longer in regular use. Its empty corridors and locked rooms seemed to resonate with stories of the past. Intrigued, Elena started taking photographs. As she focused her lens on a particularly ornate door at the end of the corridor, she noticed something peculiar in her viewfinder, a faint glow emanating from under the door. She approached cautiously, pressing her ear against the cold metal, but heard nothing. Curiosity peaked. She tried the doorknob and to her surprise, it turned. Inside was a room frozen in time. The furniture, the bedding, even the personal items on the dressing table, all seemed to be from a bygone era. But what caught Elena's eye was a vintage vanity mirror, its silvered surface reflecting the room's details. As Elena gazed into it, she saw a fleeting image of a woman, dressed in 1930s attire, applying lipstick. The image lasted only a second, but it was unmistakably there. Stifling a scream, Elena backed out of the room, heart pounding. She quickly made her way back to the populated sections of the ship, seeking the comfort of other guests and the ship's vibrant life. The next morning, over a cup of strong coffee, Elena related her experience to a ship historian. The historian, intrigued, delved into the ship's records and revealed that the room Elena had entered belonged to a Miss Isabel Thompson during one of the ship's Atlantic voyages in the 1930s. Isabel was known for her beauty and her distinctive red lipstick. Tragically, she never completed her journey, having fallen ill and passed away on board. Elena left the Queen Mary with a story she hadn't anticipated. While she came seeking the tangible histories, she left with a personal encounter from beyond, a silent testimony of the ship's storied past. The RMS Queen Mary, once a marvel of maritime engineering, is more than just a floating hotel or a remnant of a bygone era. Its steel walls and grand ballrooms echo with tales of adventure, romance, war, and tragedy. Each story, each ghostly encounter, adds a layer to its rich tapestry, blurring the lines between the living and the departed. From journalists like Matthew Schultz seeking a tale but finding a personal encounter, to friends like Jennifer and Sarah who unexpectedly bridged a connection across time, or Elena Martinez, whose pursuit of history led her face to face with the past, the Queen Mary seems to be a vessel that holds time still, allowing glimpses into its storied past. These encounters, while unique in their details, share a common thread, a reminder that history isn't just dates and events, but lives lived, loves lost, and souls that might still wander, seeking acknowledgement or simply a moment of connection. Whether one views these tales with skepticism or belief, the Queen Mary stands as a testament to the idea that places can, in their own way, remember. And in the quiet of the night, Amidst the creaks and whispers of the ship, one can't help but feel the weight of the countless stories still waiting to be told. Visiting the Queen Mary is not just a journey through hallways and decks, but a voyage through time where the present moment intertwines with echoes from the past. It's a place where, if one listens closely, the ship itself might just share its secrets, 